So I want to get you started as fast as possible. So the splashes are generated via overlap events. If you grab this tool here, that will take care of that initialization. So firstly, I'm just going to enable physics. And the reason for that is just to get some, automate some very simple movement. And the physics will apply the gravity and that will overlap this tool here. So this is just for the mo movement. But now we want to generate overlap events. So this will allow the tool to read the spheres overlap. So now we'll play. And we have a splash. And the size of the splash matches the object's size. That's something that is also taken care of by this tool. So I've had a few questions about Sequencer and comparing uh, this workflow to Niagara. Let's do the same thing again. And if you want a splash to occur, but you don't want an actual object or, or something like that, there is this very simple, simple material included. So now we have this object here, but we can't see it. So effectively, we've got a splash appearing out of nowhere. So I'm going to switch off physics. And let's say we want to use sequence. We want something that works within sequence. Okay. So we've got physics off, so let's just do a transform, something like that. Okay. It's so got a kind of pretty predictable time where the splash is going to, to happen. And, and note again, we don't have to worry too much about the angle or about the size. This is all kind of still taken care, care of with the tool. Um, now what I will need to do is go into Sequencer and turn on Autoplay to make sure that will work. Okay, there we go. It's that simple, it's that easy. And now we have a, a splash that's automated. Please be aware that it's not going to work in edit mode. So you do actually need to play for that to occur. Another way you could use this uh, very in a similar way to Niagara is if we want to do something like, okay, let's just grab this one here. And let's just place that into Sequencer. And I'll make that occur after, afterwards. Let's uh, convert that to a spawnable. Okay, let's spawn it at this time. Let's turn that off so it should spawn there, okay? Now autoplay is already set up as a default. There we go, autoplay. So we should see, unfortunately we can't do this in edit mode, but if we play through, we should see this splash occur here over on the right side, and then shortly afterwards, this splash occur just here. And you can visualize, you can at least pre-visualize what's going on by when the splash appears. You can see the kind of like location and, and size and everything. So now let's play. There we go. Another quick note is you do need to be careful about collisions if you're using simulate physics. So this mesh here does not have collisions enabled. So this should work just fine. But if I grab something like this, it is likely to have collisions enabled by default. So that will interfere with the setup. So I can just go into collisions and preset no collision in that case. Then that all works. These other examples are fine. 
they are not the collision will not interfere as we can see I actually did want to create this asset to be used within Niagara but it's not working to put it simply so here is a mesh which is one of the components of the splash and here is a phase parameter which is one of the essential parameters to play back the animation of the splash now within the blueprints this I'm able to read this parameter and play it back perfectly with no issues so when I've attempted to do the same thing within Niagara this is the result I get to put it simply so here's a master material and here is the phase parameter which is working perfectly within blueprints in this test I have swapped the phase parameter with a dynamic parameter and I'm reading that into Niagara and it's not working so I'm not saying that there isn't another way to do this or with more time and tests etc etc uh, that it's impossible I just I'm just not sure at this stage I'm not sure exactly what the issue is I'm aware of some possible ways to use different formats of data which will be compatible with Niagara possibly but then they, that could cause more issues and I don't want to get too in-depth because it gets very convoluted, it gets um, very involved. I just wanted to give a little bit more context as to why I've gone with Blueprints rather than Niagara. And I've just gone with what I've, I've found to be like the most stable, the most safe and the most simple. So I should further clarify, you can actually scrub through this effect within sequencer in edit mode so I'll set this to zero and I'll put this about here and then I'll scrub through to the end which is about two okay Okay, so already I've got to fiddle around to um, make the duration look correct. That's not yet automated in this case. Yeah, that looks fairly close. Um, but you can see it's, for example, it's not fading out at the end. So within the blueprints, if we look at the main mesh here, we not only have the phase, we have all these other parameters being animated also. The problem here, if using it uh, directly within sequencer like this, is for well the phase will cover the most significant part of the animation to get those other subtle details we would need to animate all these other parameters also and this is just this main mesh is just one component with another another three components so Unfortunately, this is not very practical in most cases. I understand Niagara, you can scrub through the effect itself. Um, I know it sucks that I can't do that with my effect, but hopefully it's not too bad to be able to set it up in this kind of way. So now let's play. There we go. So Again, I understand it may not be as ideal as Niagara in every circumstance, but I hope with these tools and with the with this kind of demo and with the information I've provided, I hope it's pretty close to any Niagara functionality. I hope it's even better in some cases. That's my hope and that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you.